Hi everyone, thanks for joining in and that's, thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be going over, I'm just going to check to make sure the webcam's running right for some of this, but uh, we'll be going over some video tips. So as mentioned, um, feel free to put in some comments in your chat, but we might as well just dive right into it so that we can um, stay on time. But uh, we're basically going to go over short form video uh, for social media campaigns. But today's workshop, we're going to go, why should we even use short form video in the first place? And we'll go over some video production tips. Um, why am I talking a little bit about this? Just to add in a little bit, I run a video production company that specializes in producing video for social media marketing campaigns. And I kind of stumbled into the field. I was doing travel videos myself and posting them on YouTube and that actually led to me getting a bunch of work with Destination British Columbia where I traveled the province doing short form videos to promote the province and share exciting experiences. But my real big break was um, the 2010 Olympic torch relay and that's where I was hired to do a run and gun show where basically I would um, host, shoot, edit, and upload videos almost daily for 106 days of the tour. And what I really realized during that, um, during that campaign was how engaging video can be and how powerful it is to capture the moment. So we'll dive a little bit more into it, but it's amazing what you can do with some in-the-moment footage, a little bit of editing, and some fitting techniques. And today we're going to focus mostly on our smartphone. And these techniques can be used with any, any kind of video production, but today we're going to really focus because it's amazing what these smartphones can now do and how um, easy it is to share some in-the-moment footage. So why short form video in the first place? Well, video is a real engaging and snackable way to share footage. The attraction in the short form video, like I said, is that snackable nature, but we live busy lives. People have short attention spans and people want content easily and quickly. Everyone's spending more and more time consuming media and posting media through mobiles. Because of this, it's what it's about looking at what's happening right now. There's something very real about sharing the moment and connecting with others right away. It's authentic and people love that. So I really look at, um, I really look at video, short form video as, as a way to activate the interest in becoming campaigners for your cause. And um, in that first link, if you just give it, it's a little 14 second video, but um, basically, um, that link is just a, a snowboarder doing a, a trick. Now it's not a simple trick, but the, the video clip itself is just very snackable and very easy to share. And that's something that that snowboarder would have done while on the slopes and then on the chair spread it. And um, it's an easy way to share something as easy as clips. So it doesn't always have to be an over polished video. Um, and these are very easily shared through social media and a great way to connect with audience and to support your branding and share your message. Uh, the next one, if you go into um, the link, there's a, a little bit less than a minute video. So if, if people don't mind going to that link, it's the Chasing Sunrise, the number two on the list. And just, just take a look at that video. Now this video was all shot on an iPhone and it's to share an experience and there's a lot of different brands and people involved but everything was shot on the iPhone and it was a campaign that did quite well and the video spread around and was even shown on CTV so um, everyone just uh, take a minute and, and watch that and see what's possible with with a smartphone
So as I said, that's just a small example of what is possible to shoot with your smartphone and how easy that would be to spread once, once edited. So we'll go over some video production on the go tips now. Um, and as I said, this can be used for other equipment too, but we're going to focus on the smartphone. So if, pe if people want, they're more than welcome to pull out their, their smartphone and um, just a quick, they, they're welcome to play around with it a bit, but um, what's really cool is there's uh, certain easy techniques, as you can see on the screen and probably a bit through the, through the webcam, but uh, a, a, great, a great way to shoot better video is, is kind of difficult here, but you can tap and that tap will tap to focus and you can also hold that down, and this is for the iPhone, um, and you can lock your auto focus and your exposure and when you tap and go into that lock mode you'll see a little sunshine that comes up next to where you've locked the focus and you can actually easily go up and down to adjust the exposure so little techniques like that can help make you capture way better video and pictures for that matter um, and those are great little techniques that will improve your video quite a bit and that tap for the focus is good too because if you tap and hold and uh, so if I tap, um, it's hard to, it'll be hard to see here but um, if I tap and go and focus on my finger now I know wherever I move the phone that's going to be where the focus stays so stuff in the background will be slightly blurry and then when I want to let it go to normal autofocus you can just tap off but that little sunshine is a great way to change exposure. So something to, um, to spend some time and get used to playing with and that will improve your video on your smartphone by uh, immense measures. So a big thing is of course story development. So what's the goal of your piece? What's the main point? Is it to inspire, create interest, build awareness or is it to simply inform? So make it worth talking about and easy to talk about. Um, whatever it is, if it gets you excited, good chances are it's going to get someone else excited. Whether it's up on the mountain doing a ski trick or a snowboard um, trick or it's something that your operation is, is running or the coffee shop has a cool new kind of coffee. There's ways to capture those moments and share them and again it can be a more polished video or it can be simply just sharing a moment in a clip. So little things to think about when going ahead and shooting a video. Make it about someone, something to do, somewhere to go. So with framing and composition, um, there's a lot of different shots. So wide, medium, and close up, whereas wide is an establishment shot to the screen. So people are welcome to hit um, the third link in the email that was sent and that'll just be a quick example of some framing examples. in the sense of like the first one with the skis drop in, it's a close up, shots help tell the story. So the close up would show small details to tell the story. Um, and the wide shot is really showing a sense of place and a medium shot is bringing the character more into the scene but still seeing a little bit of a sense of the place. So playing around with these different shots and these different type of angles help really tell your story. Um, think about what is the main point and interest of what you're filming and use these different shots to tell your story. So um, often when you're catching clips you won't need more than 30 seconds. Often 10 seconds is good enough and then catching these different clips up to 10 sec between 10 and 30 seconds gives you buffer to play around in the edit room when you um, put together your video and edit your video. Um, especially if you get more involved with doing a longer video. But also get in the habit of often, often you'll be catching different clips in that and get in the habit of when you're especially shooting with them the smart, smartphone 
um, make sure that you um, move point and shoot. So say if you're shooting at a, at a festival, um, that, sorry, if you, um, if you're say at a festival trying to capture a bunch of different shots, make sure that you move the area of where you shoot so that you're going to get different types of shots to work with when you put together a video. Um, that, that goes a really long way and also that helps you play with different footage to build up to build up to a moment that you really want to share with an audience. Um, there's the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds is a concept in um, photography and video production where the frame is divided up into nine imaginary sections. The point of interest should be where the lines intersect. So basically what I'm talking about is off-centering your subject. Now, often Instagram and different ways, I mean, this is just a rule that can be broken. Sometimes it might look really good to put, put your subject in the, in the dead center of the screen, but generally speaking, having it off-center um, makes it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So in this example of the rule of thirds, the canoe is at one of those intersection points and the canoe is going into up towards further into the lake and you know down down towards the mountains and leads the eyes into it and that rule of thirds is is a nice way to look at um, different shots and that that goes for photography too of course looking room kind of goes with rule of thirds in a way it basically is the space between the subject and the edge of the screen that they're facing so make sure you have room in front of the subject and towards the way they are facing so if you're catching a little testimony interview you you would often hold uh, your smartphone or your camera and have the person a little bit to the side as in the example you see with uh, this uh, snowmobile or with a uh, very powdery beard hair. Um, that will make it look um, way, way better on screen than having them in dead center and it's a little bit more of an off look camera which is more candid and in this example you can't see anything but if there was mountains in that in the background by having some of that space to that looking room side then you get a little bit more sense of place. So again these are just all little tips to help improve the way you capture footage um, and capture moments. Um, of course, all these rules can be broken because if the moment's happening and it's such a great moment, don't, don't worry about all these rules, just capture that moment. But as you start forming habits, that'll help increase getting better, more usable footage. So a big one, of course, is, which most, most people already know, is making sure you keep your camera or your smartphone horizontal and keeping it steady too. So there's little tripods that you can get. There's another way where if you put your elbows in, you can also make a natural tripod where you can pan and you can tilt and pan and it keeps it nice and steady. So make sure you film horizontal because if you film vertical, that footage you won't be able to use in the future. So that, that's a big one. Um, if you're filming, um, the battery tends to die faster because you're using the phone so much. So if you don't want to be interrupted by texts or calls and you're catching a, a testimony of someone you know, saying something about um, maybe they've walked into your cafe or walked into your, to your, op, to your operation, whether it's in tourism or, or whatnot, and if you can... Um, Sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought, but if you don't want to be interrupted and you want your battery to last that longer, you can go into the airplane mode and it saves so much more battery and you won't get interrupted at the same place. So just something to think about when you're filming or taking a lot of photos because your battery will start to drain a lot faster. Um, the next clip on the the link, give that a hit, and that's just uh, that's for the iPhone time lapse. So take a quick view of that. It's only 15 seconds, 
But um, in iPhones and also a lot of um, other smartphones and Androids, there's now built-in camera apps. And the time lapse is a great one because it's taking a bunch of footage and speeding it up. But it's really only taking a picture every second. And you can leave that. This, that clip that you see is just on the side of the Duffy Lake when I was coming back from a shoot. And I just put the smartphone literally into the snowbank just to the side and just let it roll for about five minutes and then got a kind of neat little time lapse. And a thing to think about with time lapse is if there's clouds in that around, that helps add more character into the scene. Um, so getting those clips and collecting those clips can go a long way too because when you're putting a piece together or editing a video, being able to pull up a little time lapse to build up with music in that can really help your edit. And the fact that it does it all right there in the camera app is great. Um, the next link you'll see is a slow-mo, and here's just a quick example of a day up in Whistler, and the snowflakes were huge and coming down, and, and no one was filming. Everyone's just having fun doing um, powder that day, but I just caught this little clip when I was on the lift, and I shared it right off the bat um, through Twitter and Instagram, and then Whistler Blackcomb picked it up and shared it a bunch of places. It got tons of views, and um, that is also an app that you can access right in your phone. Um, so that's great um, because what's great about the slow motion is um, off in the iPhone 6 it's doing about 25% of real time and what's amazing about that is you can really capture a moment and draw out only a few seconds that you want to use. So in this example I just shared that clip as is and it got spread around quite a bit because no one else was posting that much that day from the sense of video and it was easily shareable, but it caught a little bit of a magical moment as these snowflakes are, sh are falling in slow motion. So getting playing around with your camera apps will give you a lot of extra features. Now I'm, I'm kind of going through this quite quickly, um, I know because of sense of time, um, but uh, through questions and later we can follow up on different stuff, but um, yeah, I'm kind of going through this quite quickly. Um, into B-roll clip collection. I like to call this the B-roll buffet. And the idea of the B-roll buffet is that footage that support, B-roll basically is footage that supports and supplements the main part of your story. So if you get in the habit of whatever you're doing, say you're at a festival or an event, get in the habit of collecting some different clips and maybe you're not going to post them right off the bat. Um, and if you're not going to post them off the bat right off right away, that's totally fine because get in the habit of collecting these different clips with the with something like your smartphone, and then get get that good 10 seconds of of the band playing or people enjoying the festival if you're an event. And what that allows you to do is take and bank these clips, and later if you're doing a video, you can use these clips. You, you're basically putting them on standby that you can use to help support maybe an upcoming campaign, an overall highlight video you're working on, um, maybe it's used to support branding um, or to connect to your audience in different ways. So get in the habit of collecting those clips and banking them for later use. Good lighting. Good lighting is a, is a big thing in, in, um, in video. So um, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it, but right now, actually, if we were doing this, this would be a bad use of lighting because there's bright light behind me, so my face is going to be very dark. So realistically, um, if I could move the computer and everything around, I would put the subject in a different, different place where there's a bit of bright light or side light coming on towards their face or the subject so that, so that the camera can capture a better image. The, especially with smartphones, lighting goes a long way because they are limited with lighting. So get in the habit of making sure something is lit up quite well. If it's an overcast day, that's great. If there's bright sun, just be careful of the dark shadows. And obviously, unless you're going for a silhouette, don't shoot directly into the sun because whatever you're trying to make out in front of that will be too dark because the camera just can't handle that. Usable audio. Usable audio. Um, these in the smartphones, the cameras do a pretty good job at getting getting good sound. But if 
if there's lots of stuff going around, then going around the subject, so you're getting a testimony, you want to get someone walks into your cafe and you want, and they're from across the world, and you want to get a quick comment from them of how they even found out about your cafe or what they thought about it that you could potentially use later, then maybe take them, if it's too busy and too noisy in the cafe, maybe take them out in front of the cafe where there's a little bit better place for audio and get control over that audio. So you're going to have to get fairly close to your source, be aware of your surroundings, and if you get more into it, there's different stuff that you can purchase that can click some, right onto the smartphone or maybe you just you get into better equipment uh, camera equipment but you can get shotguns and different lav mics if you feel and that stuff you can find right on amazon.ca or something like that or a audio store a video production store that um, can work right with your smartphone so there is different ways if you're collecting better audio so you get to to this point where you've collected a lot of a lot of footage. Um, so apps that can be used on your phone, especially the iPhone, one that I recommend is is iMovie um, for the iPhone. That's really good. And Filmora Go um, is pretty good for Android. I believe Filmora Go might be a free app. iMovie used to be free, and I think you have to pay six or seven dollars now for it. But the app is, is quite amazing. It's pretty easy to fool around with different um, with uh, different clips. As you see in this example, there's like a timeline down there. Um, you can play around with these clips. And I suggest at the start, you have, say you've captured a, a couple moments and you want to put something together, start off really easy with three to five clips and then play around with this app. I don't have time up, um, today to go into detail how to really use this app, but um, just play around with it and then capture a couple video clips. You can import the footage and then trim it up on the timeline and then you can even add sound, you can add text. A big thing is um, in the corner, so if you're looking at the presentation um, there's uh, on the right hand side of of the the app there there's a little question mark so when you're in the app if you press on that question mark it walks you through a lot of the, the details so when you hover over stuff it'll let you know how how to trim that clip how to add in music but it's amazing what you can get away with um, in the iMovie app and how good of a little video that you can produce So when we look at editing, um, I often use it as using the right take, cutting action, and holding on shot of significance. So maybe uh, there's, uh, just go to the link, um, which is number six, the clip sequence edit example, and just watch that. It's only about 20 seconds, and then I'll kind of break down the thinking of what went on while editing that clip sequence. So if we broke that down, there's the cool thing about editing is you can edit however you want, but thinking a little bit more of it and doing some simple things can really build up to your message or to the moment or different ways to, to provoke, uh, to get emotion um, during your view. So with that little example, um, I chose a close-up at the start. It had the Purcell Heli skiing. Um, you can see that um, in in this clip. Oops, sorry. Um, you should be back there, so hopefully that's working fine there. Yeah. Um, using the right take, so that's close up. So as you see, the hands are dropping the skis into the ski bin, and then the next cut was onto a wide, and the helicopter is actually swooping in in the exact location of where the hands were dropping the skis into the bin and the helicopter comes down it's a very natural way to go to the next cut and that's cutting on action also 
and then I believe in that example there was part um, of a medium shot where you're in the helicopter with with uh, with a couple other people going on that journey and then it builds up to holding the shot of significance which I thought in this particular edit I wanted to build up to the experience of a snowboarder having the whole mountain and the whole side to himself because that's that's part of heli skiing right is getting that moment so little ways of looking at your way of editing as simple as putting four clips together um, little ways like that can go a long way um, the next clip is a simple uh, a, a more basic version of, of what you just saw in the sense of the snowboarder used three different clips from a behind the shot and then as the powder went into their face they cut on action and then they held on their shot of significance which was them going off the jump and I guess he handed it to his friend or something and that was filmed on iPhone and again was able to edit it right on the chair share it through his Instagram they got a bunch of likes he got to connect with the audience and show off a powder day um, powder day on the hill so again it was a pretty basic put together video with three cuts but a cool way to share an experience so when I say the length of video for short form video often um, you know on Twitter your your 30 seconds Instagram now lets you do up to a minute but if you've got something really cool that's 20 seconds and keep it 20 seconds instead of trying to add another 20 seconds onto it because the the longer playing around with the edit keep the keep the cuts short enough to keep the audience engaged because if the clips are too long um, when put together you could bore the audience so that's kind of playing around with the pacing of the video so just little tips to think about when putting together a video and um, actually I should mention that if if you have a clip that's strong enough and it's a good 15 second clip and standalone it's strong enough you don't have to edit other clips with it you can just put that clip out especially for social media and sharing something right in the moment right off the bat if you're at an event or there's something going on right there that you want to share a lot of people have often have questions about um, royalty free music there's sites like premiumbeat.com audiojungle.net where you can buy royalty free music and sounds uh, for a very reasonable rate on a budget and the great thing about that is that um, when often when people upload say video on YouTube or even Facebook Facebook if you don't own the rights of the music right off the bat it's going to take down your video on YouTube what they often do is banner ads and that will come up because whoever owns the rights to the music or company or record company or whatnot then they will advertise on the bottom of the video so if you don't want to do that and have full rights to your video using stuff like premium beats or um, audiojungle.net or more expensive one is musicbeds.com but it, it has um, really good good music um, that's great because you can get these songs for as low as 30 bucks and then you can put them in your videos and have full rights to your videos and then often I, I say to instead of the, the older way to post your videos as we used to I'll just kind of tap into this without going into too much detail because we're mostly sticking to video tips but uploading to YouTube and then we would share on Facebook we would share that link on Twitter and share that link on different social media platforms but what I advise now is if you do a video that you want to share around upload it to YouTube upload it separate to Facebook upload it separate to Twitter upload it separate to Instagram and any other social media platforms now Facebook has autoplay um, so if you if you share your um, YouTube link on Facebook it'll just kind of show a little thumbnail and um, it won't really push it as much whereas if you upload it separately to Facebook Facebook is really pushing their video they're really giving a go they want a piece of the video market and it'll auto play too so that that stops people's eyeballs and then they start watching the video right off the bat especially if you've made your video really engaging in that first five to seven seconds 
which is a very key point. If you can capture your audience in that first five, five to six, five to seven seconds, there's more chance they're going to watch your video to the end to see the call of action or whatever message you wanted to share. Um, so little tips with that, with uploading and with music, because the royalty-free music will allow you to do more with your videos. Um, so we're uh, just checking time. We've been just about half an hour here. And um, we'll just kind of, uh, before we go to any kind of questions in that, um, we'll kind of look at, uh, just go to um, number eight, the smartphone video tips. And that's just a minute video that sums up a lot of the stuff I kind of said. Um, take a look at that. A lot of that was filmed with a smartphone. So it shows you what kind of videos you can even capture with that. And um, then we'll end into a little bit of questions if anyone has some questions. So that that's great. Thanks for um, joining. Thanks for joining us. And um, I did whiz whiz through this pretty quickly because um, I kind of covered a lot of content. But we're just kind of touching into some of the content of what is possible with just using your smartphone. Which again, I think is really amazing. What is possible to capture? It's all about capturing the moment. And you know, I talked about some different rules, like the rule of thirds and that. The fact is. Go ahead and break the rules, but the more you get used to using something with your smartphone, which what I love about using a smartphone for video is that you've always got it on you, so you can capture that moment, and you can easily connect and share that footage and clips with people. So thanks, everyone, for joining, for people that, um, that uh, time's kind of up. But if not, if there's any questions, we can try to follow up on a couple now. And if not, um, through email, we'll try to respond to you guys in a bit. So thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. That was really helpful. I think I narrowed it did, like down, summarized it on the side there to like 20 tips, not just the eight that you mentioned. But anyway, it was really awesome. Um, I just wanted yeah. to mention a quick thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw on the side there, Trevor uh, mentioned that Filmorigo, actually, uh, if you use the free version, um, if you use it on the app, uh, it uh, it gives you it it shows the Filmorigo uh, logo at the end. Uh, if you use it the so lap, the, the computer software, um, it'll have the uh, Filmorigo uh, watermark throughout the video. Um, but you can get around that by purchasing the app uh, for about thirty bucks, I think Trevor said, um, and he said it was well worth it. So just so you know, uh, regarding Filmorigo, um, that's how that's working. Um, I've seen uh, you, Eugene has. Um, yeah. A question, um, do you use any kind of rig to hold your phone steady um, while moving? So, so um, the I, I have a, a hit case. Um, I actually don't have it right here within arm's length, but it comes with different lenses that I can use the lens um, and change and get a wider view, and then it just kind of screws on. There's other products out there. You'll see it like London Drugs in different areas, but hit case is a good one because they have another case that's completely waterproof and it, it's great for that type of stuff and it, it has a thing that lets you click in a, a, a poll, kind of a selfie poll, so I've used a lot of that. Um, I've also used um, in some of say that Chasing Sunrise video for example, I actually had more of like a, a little gimbal, um, a three axis little handheld gimbal that you can buy and that helped me keep footage really steady. Um, other times if I need to be steady I can slowly walk behind someone and I keep my elbows in 
and you just get better and better at it as you go. Another um, example, which is kind of hard for me to show, but if I had someone facing like um, in uh, part of that um, video tips video, um, I had uh, a view and then the person came into it. So often I'll stand behind the person and I'll put the camera, so if this is their head, <laughs> I know this will look weird on, on a webcam or whatever, but if their face was here, I would actually put the camera past their face and then with my arms completely out then slowly bring it back and bring that person into the picture and that's a cool way of going from a wide shot that I talked about earlier showing a big sense of place to bringing back and then you show that subject and now you've got a medium shot and it's a cool way to do two shots in one and it also makes the video much more dynamic because you brought something in the picture and of course you can do that the other way the person could be standing there you can go from the back of their head and then just slowly keep it as stable as you can and push the camera past their head to show the beautiful mountains or whatever you want it to show. So yes, we do use stuff like that and also um, little tripod. You can get a little holder for your iPhone that clicks on and that tripod can keep it really stable, which is essential when you're doing something like a time lapse. So yeah, there's different little, little things you can use. Okay, so there's another question from Janice there. I don't know if you saw that. So, uh, yeah, so I often use one called Premium Beats. So if you just go on the internet, premiumbeats.com, there's audiojungle.net. Um, there's another one, Music Beds, but that one's um, for much more bigger production. So what those sites have done is they've worked with a lot of different um, platforms in that so that if so that they know you get a license when you purchased your music and then if you're ever challenged so YouTube might say hey you don't own the rights to this music um, we're gonna put um, you know ads in that on the bottom you can easily just press in a section within YouTube and you just copy and paste your license and then within a day they've taken off those banner ads because you've proved you have rights to that music and a lot of those um, royalty free sites the better well-known ones like the ones I just talked about they have already given all their samples of their of their royalty free music to a lot of these platforms to let them know if it comes up that someone probably has bought the rights to this so that's kind of how they do it in a, in a nutshell um, when it comes uh, I'm just I see from Dion when it comes to sharing your video the sooner the better I'm assuming that totally depends on what's going on so for instance, I did um, a snow that chasing sunrise video. I I edited that pretty quickly and got that up within um, the next week because everyone was super excited about this event where people went up and you know saw these beautiful views and there's a lot of different partners. So there's a lot of excitement still about it. Or if it's a festival or something, if you can get it out pretty quick, that's that's really great. But the other way too is if it's something that isn't so time sensitive. Um, I've done a snowmobile trip where I collected a lot of footage and I took my time to edit that because nobody even knew I was on that snowmobile trip at that time and that and it was better to launch it um, at a certain time in the winter that went with that sport um, and then other times um, for instance you could be shooting something for next year and then you're gonna launch it in the spring so often I'm doing a lot of filming right now for in the summer but we're gonna launch all those videos in the spring next year because that's when it talks to that market. So if it's something that's happening like a festival or something like that, if you can get it out right, right off the bat, then it's great. If it's a big powder day at Whistler and there's 45 centimeters new powder, if you get those clips out that day, then it's going to get way more traction than it will in a few weeks. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So are there any other questions, guys, before we let Chris go? If you guys have any other questions that you think of, um, if you send them to me by the end of the day, I'll, uh, I'll uh, get them to Chris and ask him to answer them for you guys. Uh, up until then, um, I'll be sending the recording early next week. Oh, never mind. We've got more questions. Do you want to answer them now, Chris, or do you want to wait till um, an answer? Uh, yeah, I got uh, another five minutes, so I can okay. um, ask. I can answer a couple of the other ones instead of going to email. 
any um, GoPro recommendation. GoPro is great. I use it all the time. I often use it as a second camera where I put it somewhere and let it just roll while I use my my other equipment. But if it's your if it's your only camera, it's great. Um, it's got a very fisheye look often, but you can go in the settings and change the settings to more of a, a medium view compared to a big wide. So it depends the look you're going for. But for point of view cameras, it's really good and it's durable. The one kind of catch is usually you got to um, to see what it's seeing. Um, you have to go into an app and, and do um, wireless and connect to it, and then you can see because a big part of filming is is picking your framing, and that's actually why I really like the smartphone a lot of the time because I can see exactly what I'm framing in real time and I know what I'm capturing and I can also review it very easily. So GoPro's great but it does have its limitations in certain certain ways but for action sports and you're just strapping it onto something and then you want to review the footage later it's great. Uh, lav mics can they get in the way? It depends on your setup if you have a wireless setup I mean if you're starting to get more into lav mics lav mics and that it depends on your setup if you're using smartphones and that um, it's great but if you're going to that level you're probably into DSLR or mirrorless cameras or getting into a bit bigger cameras and you would have a separate setup um, I love lav mics because I wirelessly put it to put it to someone and then have it under their shirt and clip on um, but then that gets into more expenses that's like anywhere from four hundred to eight hundred dollars for a, for a decent wireless setup the other way is if you're using smartphone and you just want to be able to get better um, sound, you'd have a longer, you could plug just, just a mic directly into this, but the wire would be kind of cumbersome, could get in the way. But if you, it's long enough, you can still kind of put it under the shirt or clip it on them, and you'll stand still fairly close, and you'll get much better audio because the lav mics work in an area um, omnidirectional where it just kind of picks up this area of sound compared to way way behind them like a shotgun mic or other mics. Not sure if that really answered your question, but just a little bit on a little bit of lab mics. The best gimbal for the mobile phone, I'll have to follow up with that. Um, I don't really have a best gimbal. I've only used once with, with a mobile phone, and I forget the name of it at the moment, so I'll have to follow up with that. But um, there's a few, and they're like single hand ones that your phone just kind of clips in um, and they're anywhere from 200 and they can go up so it is adding an, in another price but it's amazing how stable the footage can be once you kind of get used to using them. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for your time. We really appreciate it. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I think that covers all our questions. Yeah, thanks everyone for your time and um, yeah, look forward to seeing any clips out there that uh, people post in the future. And feel free to contact me. I mean, you can find me on social media at Apri Media and um, my email is chris at chriswheeler.ca so you can send me emails too. But we'll be hooking up um, with a follow-up email after this. So thanks everyone for your time. Thank you very much. So look for the recording ne early next week, and our next uh, Seeker School session will be Monday, August the 22nd. I will send you all the details for that uh, probably next week, uh, just to let you guys know. Um, but thank you very much, and I hope you guys have an awesome Thursday. Bye for now. Cheers, everyone.